Just real quick, I am Claire Greenwood. I am Senior Vice President for Economic Competitiveness at the Chamber of Commerce for Greater Philadelphia. Um, I have two um, friends in our community here with me this afternoon to talk a little bit about, you know, kind of what we see and probably hopefully bring together some of the conversations that have been happening throughout the day here um, for you. Um, I oversee um, a lot of our work around economic development at the Chamber, um, including some very focused work in the life sciences space and very much in partnership with others like Sam at the city, um, our trade association, Life Sciences Pennsylvania, and many of you, and I know I heard um, Lou and um, Anthony and others mention uh, my name in the previous conversation. So we um, hopefully have bios. Just real quick, we'll do introductions, and then we'll just jump right in. Sure, ahead, Claire. Hi, uh, I'm Steve Ray. I'm a senior vice president and principal with EconSult Solutions. Uh, we've been pleased to work with the CEO Council, the Science Center, West Philadelphia Skills Initiative on projects really looking at the future of the cell and gene therapy industry, and we'll talk about that later. Hi, Claire. Hi, Steve. It's a pleasure to be here with you alongside President Lincoln. I am, <laughs> I am Sam Woods Thomas. I'm Senior Director uh, for Business Development for the City of Philadelphia Department of Commerce. Prior to that, I was the Director of Life Sciences and Biotech for the city. Uh, it's my role, my responsibility to grow retain, uh, attract, and do strategic work around our key industries, biotech um, being among the most key of those industries. Uh, I'm really excited to talk to you all today. Great. Thank you both. Um, so I think we thought we would jump right in with um, something, a, a twist on the title of today's conversation, but maybe from a positive direction. So what do you both see as the opportunities for Greater Philadelphia in the life sciences space? Um, where do our current strengths lie? Um, and where do you think we can um, take advantage of those strengths? Sam. Thank you for that spin on the panel title, Claire. I'm excited. Uh, so, you know, in Philly, we're traditionally hard on ourselves, right? We always look at the flaws. But let's start with the strengths. We are an extremely well-positioned life sciences city. We've done a lot of work over the last several years to put ourselves in this position. When we started looking at this industry, when I first came on board in 2017, we didn't really know how to tackle it. The first thing we did was we, was we with some partners, did a real estate study of all available commercial lab space in Philadelphia. This was 2018. We found out we were 98.6% occupied across all commercial lab space in the city. As someone whose job it was to bring in life science companies, that was sort of a, I had, you know, I don't want to over-exaggerate, but I had a panic attack. Uh, since then, the development community, the business community, has all sort of aligned and collaborated to start building laboratory space on speculation. You heard it from a, a couple panels ago. Um, we are now at 14% vacancy, which is a pretty sweet number to be at. We are building lab space across the spectrum uh, from incubation to graduation to manufacturing. We are now looking at some, some more nuanced issues in our life sciences ecosystem. We're looking at incredible venture capital numbers, which we, which we expect to keep growing. We see our talent infrastructure as probably the most important thing for us moving forward. Uh, the, the, the city that figures talent out, and not just high-level talent, but sort of manufacturing talent, is going to be the next winner of the great American life sciences battles. So we got work to do, but I feel extremely good about where we are. Thanks. That's deep. And, you know, I bring 27 years worth of history doing economic research and economic development in Philadelphia. And I can remember when I first got here, we used to complain about the life sciences. We used to say, it takes too long. You know, it takes you so long to get the FDA approval. It's all big pharma. It's not you know, it's not the entrepreneurial side. We used to complain, well, we're never gonna be as fast growing as Boston or Silicon Valley because they're doing engineering. The product goes in one day, you know, sometimes in one day or one minute, um, who knows. But, but today, you know, when we look at it and as we've been looking at it with Claire and others, uh, you know, we've really got five advantages and you've heard, you've heard them today, but let me just maybe quickly summarize. We've got the research infrastructure, we've got hundred colleges and universities in the region, you know, five, is it five medical schools now? Four, 
seven medical schools. All right, I'll get it right. Um, but you know, they're bringing in, you know, fourth largest uh, amount of NIH dollars, most in uh, cell and gene therapy in the country. Take all of that. One piece. Second piece. We have human capital. Mention 100, college, 100 colleges and universities, over 360,000 grad, uh, over 360,000 students, over 130,000 graduates every year. That gives you a fuel for an economy like this. We've got the innovation output. We're producing patents. We're producing ideas. We're turning those research dollars into products, and increasingly, we're turning them into products that are commercializable. Thus, we're seeing the venture capital investment. Thus, we're seeing the real estate investment. And finally, we have the value proposition. It's cheaper here than our biggest competitors, Boston, San Francisco, New York. One I worry a little bit about is Raleigh-Durham. Um, as a Duke graduate, I know the benefits of, of the research triangle, but also they're the only ones who can compete, but they're growing so fast that their cost is going up. So those opportunities really make me optimistic about where Philadelphia is going. And, what the, and where we can go. And we should say it's not just sort of cheaper. It's a lot cheaper. It's half the price <laughs> with all the same amount of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So we have all talked a lot about this, and I think some of you have started to hear, um, and I suspect today in the themes, but when we really think about this um, you know, collective aspiration to be a hub in this space. And I think we all share um, the idea that not only can we be a hub of companies, research and companies and activity, but also of potentially the most diverse life sciences workforce in the country, which is something that many of us and I know partners are also in this room thinking about. Um, and we want to tackle that in a couple of ways, right? We, I think we'll get to a conversation around how we galvanize public support around the industry. Um, I think there was some mention in the last conversation about how we really raise the visibility of our region and our community. And we're doing a, um, a whole series of things along with partners to really strategically promote our assets, and we've heard about some of them. Um, but the other piece that Sam, you mentioned, and maybe Steve will talk, um, go to you first, is how we really solve for the talent challenges in the industry and do that in a really proactive way to ensure that that doesn't become a rate limiter and that we really think about how to grow this sector inclusively. So. I know we've done some work together more, most recently um, in thinking about this question, so maybe you want to start there, and I know Sam maybe follow with some of the work that's really underway. Sure, sure, Claire. And you know, over the last, I guess, three years now, we've done two analysis of the future workforce implications, and really with a focus on the cell and gene therapy industry. And um, we've tried to look at both the supply and the demand. What's our supply of talent in the region? Um, one of the things you heard earlier was that, you know, that base of pharmaceutical talent was a good starting point. But we know as we're growing that we're going to need to move it forward. What we're seeing in the research that we've done says that Philadelphia's cell and gene therapy sector is growing and maturing. We've got existing companies that are growing. We've got new entries coming in. And we've got a pipeline of, of product, talent, and investment that's helping to fuel that growth. With that, we've seen growth in employment within the cell and gene therapy industry. Just from 2019 to 2022, um, we saw growth of about 80% within cell and gene therapy companies. When we're looking at, we use LinkedIn as actually a great survey of actual employment. One of the challenges when you look at uh, cell and gene therapy is there's no real sector. It hasn't been defined by the Census Bureau or the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So what we do is we actually go deep into the LinkedIn data, pull that data out as a proxy for understanding it. What we've seen is that growth in the existing cell and gene therapy companies. Interesting, the other big growth we saw, somebody mentioned pharma, where's pharma in this world? We saw, looking at the LinkedIn profiles of people working at pharma companies in the Philadelphia region, an incredible growth in the number of people who were listing cell and gene therapy skills as a part of what they're doing. Let's call that a leading indicator of what's going on in, in, in the pharma world. Where we see this industry going is, you know, we, when we first did the study, we looked at scenarios for the future of, greater, of, of, of the region. 
Um, I'll go very quickly, um, <laughs> since we just got a sign. Um, um, you know, one was we're status quo. We're way beyond that. The second is that we're a, a research hub. We're, we're there, and we're a research hub. The third is that we're a growing manufacturing hub and a center of the industry. We see that on, on the path. With that, we would expect similar growth over the next five years. That leads to lots of opportunity as the industry grows. It also means a diversification of the talent. Most of the talent so far has been at the bachelor's degree and above. Future opportunity with manufacturing opportunities means we can diversify that greatly. I, I know I only have uh, less than uh, negative 15 seconds to do this, but everything is completely 100% correct, what you just said. It, the, the life sciences um, talent pool is the most important thing we can bring to the table. It also means, by the way, that as companies mature and go into the manufacturing phase, the jobs become a lot more accessible to everyday Philadelphians. Uh, it's really important to us that especially as life science companies push outwards into places like Kensington and Allegheny West and further west in West Philadelphia, um, that the residents in those areas have the opportunity to, to work those jobs, to get into this what is actually kind of a new manufacturing revolution. Uh, and so in order to do that, there are multiple sort of agencies developing workforce development um, programs. It's a complicated issue. Every time we think we figured it out, there's another layer to the onion that we have to peel back. But essentially, it takes a collaborative, concentrated, public-private partnership to do it. You need companies bought in to train in the processes. You need community engagement folks to, to let residents know these jobs are real. And you need educators to actually take the time to, to train uh, cohorts of, of lab, um, lab workers. So we're very optimistic that life sciences will work, in fact, for all Philadelphians. Thank you both. I know we're uh, <laughs> closing our time and moving on to the last um, conversation. Maybe I will close with what we did not get to, which is um, something that was mentioned in the last panel, that we're really in a very important moment, I think, in the next number of months to galvanize our conversations um, and present a cohesive and unified ask to what will be um, a new administration in Harrisburg with the transition of a governor coming. Um, as well as obviously changes in the legislature. And um, I certainly will invite um, folks, and I'm sure Sam would do the same, to have a chat with us afterwards about the work that we're doing to build in coalition with Life Sciences Pennsylvania and folks across the Commonwealth that cohesive strategy. What can we say together? How can we have a unified voice um, and sort of invite you all to, to come and, and see us so that we can really um, move the needle on, I think um, Lou said in the last panel, a really bold agenda um, in Pennsylvania in the next administration. So thanks. <laughs>